Hi everyone, so in this video we're quickly going to put some rivets on an object using MASH. So um, in the scene I have a couple of NURBS curves and I have lofted a polygon surface between them, like so. Um, uh, okay, so uh, let's get going. <laughs> it's going to be pretty easy and pretty quick. So I'm just going to load up the modeling toolkit and I'm going to uh, select the multi cut tool and then I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to draw some new edge loops that I want the rivets to travel along easy as that and then I'm going to uh, go into the selection tool and then select uh, these edge strips that we just created here by double clicking on them like so and then I'm going to hold down the control key and then uh, drag select these um, corner edges because I don't want those so that done I can then go modify convert Polygon edges to curve. I'm actually going to do this two ways. The first way is going to be this polygon edges to curve way. The next way is going to be using component selection sets. Hold on, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, so I'm just going to go to the option box here and make sure that the degree is set to linear, which it is not by default, so just make sure that, that is set. And then we've got this nice curve. So uh, next up we want a rivet. So I'm just going to do this very lazily. Um, let's just create a sphere, select the bottom faces, and then shrink the top down like so make it tiny and then um, give it a shiny material. Done. And then with that selected, we can create a mesh network. So you just go create mesh network and then we've got a mesh network. Our rivets are actually sitting in shadow down here uh, with the default distribution. So if I just go to the attribute editor, here's our mesh network. Uh, I'm going to set the um, distance X to zero. And uh, then I'm going to select this polygon curve that we created, select the weighter, and then I'm going to add a curve node. So um, if you select a curve before adding a curve node, it's automatically added to the curve dropdown. Otherwise, you just have to drag and drop the curve in here. Uh, so that done. I'm going to turn off animation so that the rivets don't actually move along the curve. And then I'm going to uh, check ignore step, which is just going to make the rivets fill the curve. Back on the distribute node, I can increase the number of objects. You can start to see the rivets appear here. Oh, they're all facing the wrong way. Hold on. I just need to rotate these around like that. And then um, we can just yeah double the number of points, say, something like that. You can play with this until you're happy. So I'm just holding down the um, command key on Mac. It's control key on PC. And just um, right mouse clicking in the number of points box. Right mouse click and drag in the number of points box here to, to um, use the virtual slider. So there you go. There's some rivets on our objects. Nice and easy. OK, so let's do this with um, component selection sets. I should say that this is all um, live because the NURB circle is live and the uh, poly to curve, all the history is still there. So if I get this original NURB circle and I scale it, everything stays um, kind of nice and Life. And then if I grab the if I was to, if I was to uh, grab the lofted surface here and add a say a lattice deformer, let's just add some S divisions. Oops, and then grab some lattice points and then move that. You see that everything sticks as well. Um, yes, which is pretty cool. So done. Okay, so let's. Oh, the other thing is that these um, this network is the instancer network. So uh, this isn't an actual mesh, so I can't like grab verts on this or do anything else with this. Uh, like deform it. Um, if I wanted to just deform the rivets, I couldn't do that because it's an instancer. So I can change this uh, by going mesh utilities switch mesh geometry type, and what that'll do is it'll switch it over to a repro, which is an actual mesh. So I can then grab verts and do what I like with them uh, if you want to butcher it like that. Okay, cool. So uh, that done, let's hide the repro mesh and um, we're gonna hide this curve because we don't need that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do this based on edges now. I said component selection sets. This can be vertices or it can be done on faces if you want to do faces, um, like face centers. So let's select these edges again. And then like and select these corner edges because I don't want them. What I could have done is save the selection before, but I didn't think that far ahead. Uh, so uh, this done. Um, here are our edges. Let's go uh, create sets, a quick select set, and let's just call this edges because I like that. Um, original. And so uh, we can create a new mesh network with our sphere again. So go create mesh network and then um, 
over down here in the mesh roll down, we can just drag the edges selection set onto our network. Now you see our rivets are here, they're facing the wrong way. So we just need to change the rotation on that sphere. So they're facing the right way now. And then um, on the mesh network that we've got here, if we just hit flood mesh, then it'll put one of these rivets on. If I just show the jump here, put one in the middle of every single um, every single edge. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So like I said, this could be, it could place them on vertices if you had a vertex selection set, or it could place them on face centers if you had a face center selection set. Um, so that's that. Okay, so uh, something to be aware of. When you're using a selection set, and I say move the underlying mesh, you notice how it didn't update um, like it uh, like we did when we were using the curve. Um, and that's because selection sets um, don't uh, aren't live as it were. So what we need to do is we need to trick the selection set into being live by um, telling MASH to monitor the mesh for changes rather than the selection set for changes because the selection set isn't actually changing when you modify the geometry, um, it's the geometry that's changing. So we need to drag in the, um, the lofted surface into this input mesh slot here um, and the reason that we do that is so that MASH will then monitor the mesh for changes as well as the selection set. So um, if we then change the mesh, see that it's nice and live. So uh, cool, that's easy and done. So that's two different ways of kind of distributing uh, things on a surface in a nice controlled way um, that you could use for rivets or seams or anything like that. So hopefully you found that useful and I'll see you next time.